Okay, once again, good afternoon. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. That is for transcript purposes. This will be a 10 minute press conference. Joining us are the student athletes from Duke University, Tyrese Proctor, Kyle Filipowski, Jeremy Roach, as well as head coach John Shire. At this time, we'll turn it over to Coach Shire for his comments on the game and follow up with questions for all. Coach? Well, one, uh, congratulations to Tennessee. They played an outstanding game. They're incredibly well coached. Um, they're, they're tough. They're, they've been through it before. And uh, they made some big time plays. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of our team. We've had a really a great season, you know, and uh, it's hard to reflect on all of that right now. In, in the moment, you're, I'm hurting for these guys. They've given us everything you could ask for. They've uh, fought through perseverance. They've fought through adversity. They've uh, stuck together when things weren't looking as good and came into this game, one of the hottest teams in the country, and we felt like we, you know, were supposed to win this game, as did they. And, you know, really felt like a, you know, Sweet, six, sweet 16 Elite Eight game, you know, type of game. It was, uh, they're really good, and credit them, they, you know, shoot almost 50 from three, and uh, Kamala has one of his, you know, best games, maybe his best game ever, and you got to tip your hat to him. But really proud of our team and what we've done. It, it hurts. Uh, it's, it's, it stings, it's, it's going to be that way for a while, but uh, really proud of our guys and these guys next to me right here. Row three, please. Coach, it's, you mentioned it's, it's tough to kind of reflect on all the success you guys had this year, but is there, looking back at it, with this group of guys, or is it something that amazes you that, you know, everything you guys have accomplished with such a young group? I don't know if it amazes me, but I'm, I'm proud, you know, to, to accomplish what we have. And these guys are champions next to me. They're ACC champions. They've, you know, they have 27 wins. They've had a really good year. And I think I speak for all these guys. They can tell you if they feel differently. But we expected to be in this position. That's what we wanted. And that's why these guys chose to come here. And, um, you know, you want to be in a position where you have a chance. We're playing to go to, go to a Sweet 16 against a great team. And um, so it's hard to reflect fully right now, but I do know I'm proud. I'm grateful for these guys that they've stuck with it and just they made the decision to come here and come back and all that. Uh, but it, it hurts in the moment right now. Row one. Yeah, Kip Coons, Press Box View. John, you, you start D Derek instead of uh, Mark Mitchell tonight. And I assume Mitchell's not available, but uh, Derek had probably one of your most effective offensive players in the first half, yet he does not get a shot in the second half. I wonder if, if you could explain what happened on offense that he was so limited. Well, you know, one, Derek's had a really good year, and, you know, he had some big shots in the first half. It was our entire offense. They credit them, they did a great job with making passes difficult. You know, they contested, they switched a lot. It was hard to run offense. And, you know, to me, it wasn't just about, you know, Derek. It was about the shot quality that all of us were getting. You know, Derek didn't get a shot in the game. So you have to credit them and what they did defensively. And, you know, for us on offense, I could have helped these guys more. We could have done more things to uh, get quality looks. You have to really work. To, you have to work for everything in a game like this. You have to work to get open. You have to work on your drives and, um, you know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Row two. Hi, Rachel Kaplan, Duke Chronicle. Coach, so obviously Mark was out, and at least publicly that was a pretty last-minute decision. Can you talk a little bit about um, what it meant to kind of have one, just one less player in the rotation, especially in such a hard-fought game, um, and what that kind of did to the players and did to the pace of the game? Well, it, it happened last second. You know, Mark... Um, hurt his knee, we're, we're not sure quite what's wrong. We need to still do some follow-ups with him, but um, he didn't feel great yesterday. We felt like he was gonna give it a go today and try, but you know, Mark's been a warrior for us all year. I mean, he's shown up every single day, competed every day, and right before the tip, he just didn't have the same, same burst. So obviously, not gonna put him out there if he didn't feel great. And 
he didn't. So that happened late. Um, he's been a key guy for us. You know, he started every game. He's been, you know, he's really the guy where he defends everybody. He's a jack of all trades. He just, you can have any, but anybody on the court with him. So um, it was a little hectic right before the game. Now, also understand, they're missing their starting point guard, too. So that's not, that's not an excuse in any way. But for us, of course we miss Mark. You know, Derek did a good job stepping up. He's done that throughout the year. And um, thought we ran out of gas down the stretch. Row three. I asked Derek the same question in the, in the locker room. But, and he says it's all basketball's a game about runs. But how frustrating was it knowing that any time you guys made a couple big shots, they just come back with a big three? And... It, the cycle kept on happening and happening. Did you feel like you also had to kind of reach into a, a bag of tricks and try and find anything that could work? Well, it was a disjointed game. I mean, one, we didn't have Mark right before the game. Jeremy gets three fouls and then his fourth pretty early. So one is uh, trying to make sure we, you know, have as much gas in the tank as possible, but also trying to protect him. You know, we need him in the game. And so we went zone. That's not something we do a lot of. Uh, but, you know, really trying to protect the paint. Credit them, that's where they hit some threes. You know, they haven't been a great shooting team like that, but they made us pay for that tonight. And, you know, you're not going to – the the first game that we had, it, it's not going to be that way most of the time. You know, it's, it's going to be back and forth in a game of runs. We just – they made a couple more than we did. To the back. Alec from UCF. Uh, as for coach, how much did uh, early foul trouble affect the game plan? Well, it wasn't ideal. That's that's part of how it goes. They they did a great job of attacking the basket. Thought we probably settled a little too much in the first half. But look, if Jeremy getting fouls, flip any of these guys next to me, that's a big deal. And you know we still played those guys, and they did a good job playing through it. But you're you're you end up managing the game as opposed to being really aggressive and instinctive, which are, which is what we've done a great job of doing. To the back. Cody Taylor, USA Today. Uh, Tyrese, um, obviously today wasn't what you wanted, but to go up against, uh, we just talked to Santiago, uh, to go up against him, two NBA Academy guys, just, you know, how cool was that to kind of go up against him in, on this stage? Um, yeah, obviously pretty cool. Um, lived with him for a while when, I, when he came over to uh, the academy and it's just good matching up with him again back back on the big stage. Row two. West Rucker 24-7 sports. This is a, for Kyle. I know that even on a short turnaround, you all get a chance to watch film and do scouting and you've played the schedule that you played this year. How did Tennessee's physicality compared to maybe some of those Purdue's and Virginia's and other kind of physical teams you've played? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, we weren't really at our best when we played Purdue. Um, so, I, and, you know, that was in the beginning of the season. But, I mean, aside from Purdue, I'd probably say that Tennessee was the next, if not the most physical team that we played um, all year, you know, aside from all of the conference games. I mean, that's no hit on any of the teams we've, we've played. That was just saying how physical Tennessee was today. Row three, please. Hi, it's Adam Rowe, 24 7 Sports. This question is for Jeremy mostly, but, but the other guys too. Uh, how does a loss like this in the NCAA tournament, after going on a 10, 10 game winning streak, compare to maybe last year? And what kind of fuel, what kind of fuel will that bring to your fire in the off season? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it hurt. Um, I can talk about last season, whatever. I mean, obviously we wanted to make it as far as we could, but um, I mean, it happened this March. Uh, it's a one game season. I'm just proud of these guys for fighting through everything that we've been through, injuries, losses, tough losses. And we just kept battling adversity, staying the course. So I'm just proud of these people. Justin Deegan, Orange Blossom Sports. This is a question for Jeremy. Kind of to build off of that, being one of the uh, when being one of the eldest in the locker room, what are you going to be telling the guys in the locker room when you go back there, you know, the younger guys, about how to kind of regroup from this and attack next season? Yeah, I mean, it's not the end of the world. We, we just lost the March Madness game. But, I mean, come back to work. I mean, the work, the work never stops. Um, I mean, that's really it. The work never stops. Stay the course. I mean, keep your head high. Um, we got to be proud of this season. I mean, obviously, like you said, ACC champs. 
um, one game away from being coach co regular season. So I mean, we had we had a hell of a season. Um, <clears throat> it's something to be proud of. We'll take a question from one of our Zoom attendees, Dan Tortora. Coach, uh, for you this season, what has been the most rewarding part of the season? And to the student athletes, a same question. I know it's a, it's a tough day, but what's been most rewarding about this year? I don't think it's even close for me. I mean, it's it's seeing these guys grow as players, as people, uh, seeing our team do the same thing. I felt like we made huge strides from, from November to, to now. I mean, it's I think our team is night and day. And we ran into the the wrong team on the wrong day. I mean, they outplayed us today, and you have to credit them. But I felt like we could play with anybody in the country, um, and that's for me by far the most rewarding thing. Like to represent the school where I played, where I've coached for the last nine years, has meant the world. And um, you know, I'm just proud of these guys for what they've done. Row two. West Rucker, 24-7 Sports. This is a question for John. Uh, Olivia Comas had a couple of games this year, maybe four or five, where he's done something like this. And then there have been some two-point, four-point, five-point games. What was the, the scouting report on him? Just Was there a way to try to just you know contain what he does or make sure he doesn't have one of those kind of games? Yeah, I mean, look, he's, you know, he's been a really good player. He's also, he hasn't been the league scorer. You know, you're... Um, Vescovy's key guy. He, he draws a lot of attention, the way he moves and cuts without the ball, and they set hard screens for him. And so the Kamwa, he credit him. I thought he hit some really tough shots. You know, there's some contested shots in the paint. He had three threes. I don't know if he's hit three threes, uh, but, you know, he's obviously worked and an experienced player. So you got to give him all the credit in the world. Thought he played a great game. Um, but sometimes that happens, unfortunately. A player rises to the occasion, and you have to give him credit. Final question will be from a Zoom attendee. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, this is Chris Seidel from Hermiston Radio in Baltimore. I'm sorry for the loss today. This question is for Coach uh, John. Coach, what do you see? What did you have to? What did you see during this game that you may want to work on for next year, or is there something that you could do that you could work on to to improve to to, to move on? Well, obviously, there's a lot that we can do better. It's if I'm not even close to being there with thinking about next year. Uh, I'll obviously evaluate this after afterwards. I'm going to watch this game. I have to. I have to watch this game and uh, think about how I could have helped these guys better, things we could have done. Um, but you know, sometimes that's how the game goes. I don't want to over over evaluate it either. You know, and um, we were right there. You have to. Hit a few more shots and get a few more rebounds, and it's, it's this game is it's it's fragile. So uh, anyway, I could answer that question at a later time, but I just want to say again how proud I am of these guys right here and what they've done and will continue to do. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts will be provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you all for joining us.